Yesterday's quick-fire phone-in uh, only yielded three calls. My mistake. I think panel beating was uh, too narrow a topic. Uh, so today we're going to open it out uh, with the question, what is the best thing? What's the best thing of all? Um, uh, we've, so far we've got uh, Sky Plus, uh, a cup of Brazil nuts. That was amusing. Livestock, valid and wet wipes. That was a, a fascinating uh, call from an elderly lady in Hempton. Let's have some more. Line two. The first smile of a newborn. Ah, who could not like that? Who could not like that, though? Uh, Herod. Yes, Herod. That's right, because he was a baby killer. He enjoyed... Yes, he killed lots of babies. He did. Uh, we don't like him. Uh, line four, Sean. Oh, it's got to be. It's got to be your radio show, Alan. <laughs> oh, you, I, don't, I have no need to... I can, you've saved me a lot of money on toilet paper now because you've already uh, done the job for me, <laughs> as, it, as, it, as it were. You uh, are slicker. Yeah, all right. Well, obviously, that's the implication, you know. Um, line six, uh, Stuart. It's sliced bread. What about sliced bread? <laughs> Sliced bread, it's the best thing, isn't it? That's what people say. They say, it's well, the best thing. Uh, yeah, but sliced bread is. Well, that's a, that's a phrase, but it's not actually the best thing, is it? Can I have a T-shirt? No, no, of course you can't. It's the, that's, that's, um, that's, not, that's just a turn of phrase. Yeah, but it's, just, it's the best thing, isn't it? Because it's what people say in the it's thing. Not, they say, the best thing I know, is sliced I know, bread. I know they say that. I'm familiar with the phrase, but it's just a turn... It's not literally true. Then why do people say it? Of course because it's true. It, it's not, bread is the best thing. It's the best it's, thing. It's stop bread. Keeps, if you keep saying it, sure, it's we, not going to make it any more we all, true. We all know the phrase, we mate. We all know the phrase. <laughs> it's just an idiom. You're an idiot. No, an idiom, not an idiot. You're, you're an, an idiot. No. You're, no, you're an idiot for not knowing what idiom is. It's clearly confused you because you think I've just substituted the T with, with, with an M. You stupid gim. <laughs> Uh, you, or you, you momal mwam. Oh, what you got? Maybe that. Uh, you, yeah, you're, you're a complete cunm. Hmm. Well, I think you're a prick. Right, well. get rid of him. Sorry about that. Uh, we, I should have, I should have uh, knocked him off more quickly. I wasn't quick enough. I and a dick. Shit. Right. Um, right, well, he's, he's gone now, but I'll continue to, to, to speak my mind about him. Stuart, I've got to say, I think the Clifton Suspension Bridge was built for people like you. The fact that you can drive cars across it is a bonus, so do the decent thing. And leave the keys in your car so uh, someone can shift it afterwards. And please don't, don't call in saying I'm encouraging people to kill themselves. Again? Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm suggesting that one person throw himself off Clifton Suspension Bridge because he is, and hopefully soon to be was, a very unpleasant individual. Uh, a bit like Jamiroquai. We are so, with several O's, excited to be here with fashionista extraordinaire Tommy Chaucer. Tommy. Hi, and excited is right, because today is all about the skirt. After two years of heavy tailoring with all manners of trouser, baby, the skirt is back. OK. So, cop a feel of these. Oh. Now, our first oh. skirt is right. a circle skirt, modelled right. by the beautiful Kirsty. Hello. Just £65. She can't be. Oh, you mean the price. Oh. And it's a skirt that's an expression of joy. It's summertime, it's good times, it's light, it's airy, and mm. it's fun. It's a happy skirt, yes. isn't it? Yeah. It's very... Elated. It's over the moon. It is. It's, it's, well, it's chuffed to bits. You can't wipe the smile off its no, face. It's billowy. Like a windsock. Like a, like a windsock. Or like a tent. Yes. Or, uh, a marquee. marquee. Like a, marquee, like maybe. a wedding, big wedding marquee that's not been moored properly. That's right. Uh, and, and you can see exactly what the skirt does for Kirsty's posture. The way she walks. The way she holds herself. And wow, Kirsty owns it. Really? Oh, well, thank you for bringing it in, Kirsty. I mean, she makes it work mm. for her. Oh, totally, yeah. I mean, Simon. Yes. Say something. It's got a beautiful silhouette. Yes, I mean, yes. It's a, it is a great shape. It really is. Um, I would also add that it's uh, comfortable, modest, and good for Sunday best. Useless. And it's got uh, two poppers, so you can adjust it if you do change in size or once a month, possibly. Because when a woman enters the menstrual stage of a feminine cycle, she will swell around the tummy. So let's bring oh. out our next gorgeous girl. Julia! Julia! Now, this is a Durndell skirt. Now, this I love. It's shaped like a bell, concentrated around the waist, around the hips, and this one is very on trend. It is like a stripy bell with her legs as the hammer. 
feel the fabric, Simon, then talk about it. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Have a yeah. feel. <laughs> feel the fabric. Oh. <laughs> yeah. It's decent. Yeah? yeah. Exactly. And it, it's it's decent a decent bit of skirt. <laughs> so no, sorry, I take that back. <laughs> Well, it's saying the Dolce Vita, Roman Holiday. It is, it's saying... Molto bene! Molto bene! Molto bene! Molto bene. Oh, okay, not that loud, you but, you know... <laughs> <laughs> there's no getting away from it, Tommy. Sometimes Simon and I can be outrageous, <laughs> really can. Let's look at another woman in a skirt. Our next skirt is modelled by the lovely Louisa. Oh, very curvy stripes, like she's been squeezed out of a giant tube of... Uh, Colgate lady paste. <laughs> and we've paired the skirt with daring red shoes that really draw the eye. And it says, I'm on the town. It says, I mean business. It says, I'm comfortable, but I'm nobody's fool. Yeah, it's saying, I'm a whirling dervish. Yes, I like to go to the office, but sometimes I like to sit on a park bench with Rivita and Philadelphia looking sad. But it's also saying, I'm happy. I like to leap in the air and sing, whoa, body form. <laughs> That's, uh, yeah. It never bloody shuts up, this yeah, skirt. Well, it, is, it, 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 it <laughs> is a Stripy chatterbox. It is good. It's a magnificent skirt. Tommy, join me at the lady. I think this this look works for Julia, but I can also see her perhaps with her hair up. Totally. Uh, Excuse like me, my this. darling. Thank you, darling. Um, maybe a shocking pink clutch bag, sleeves pushed up, LA law style. Um, totally. Hair up, daytime casual, mm -hmm. hair down. One word: accessorise. Wrist, neck. Ears. Heads, shoulders, knees and toes. No. Nails, lots of colour. Accessories where you can really let your hair down. Yeah, although I've just told you to put it up <laughs> to me. She's smiling. Earrings, maybe a couple of big hoops. Just toss your head back and shake it around. Let them clank against your neck. <laughs> Thanks, Louisa. Thanks, sweetheart. That was sensational. Let me say bang! <laughs> let me say oh! oh. Let me say shy! Yes. Uh, fuck. <laughs> Put it all together, what have you got? Scandinavian! What's that? Scandinavian! What do you call a Scandinavian cartoon season on Channel Fucking 4? <laughs> Heartbeat with Nick Berry. <laughs> EastEnders when Nick Berry was on it. <laughs> and the chaps up in here, every loser wins by waiting for it, Nick Fucking Berry. <laughs> oh, fucking hell. I get on it. What are you fucking looking at? Lucky that. Yeah. <laughs> hey, do you know what I'm fucking sick and tired of? People coming up to me saying, Paul, you're a sexist. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not a sexist, I'm a radical feminist. I, am. I think you've got to be these days if you want to get your end away. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, I'm so fuck it, I'm a feminist, you know. I, I know, I know, it's not how women are on the outside. I know, it's how they are on the inside of it. It's how they are as a human being. You know, and if they've got big tits, that's a bonus. <laughs> <laughs> hey, do you know what I love? Samantha Fox. She's fucking lovely, isn't she? Oh. I've got this, like, fantasy, right, where I've got, like, Samantha Fox and Linda Lusardi in front of me, and they're both naked. And I've got to choose between them. And it's a fucking nightmare, I can't do it. <laughs> in the end, I just have to toss. <laughs> Probably come down on the side of Samantha Fox. <laughs> <laughs> she's lovely, isn't she? So curvy, isn't she? Oh, not much upstairs, you know. <laughs> but then who wants to shag Bamba Gascoy? <laughs> <laughs> not even Mrs. Fucking Gascoy. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know, before I come out tonight, though, I went to the Chippy, right? Get a bit of nose bag. <laughs> Right, I'm stood at the back of the queue. There's a fucking student at the front of the fucking queue. <laughs> right, writing a fucking check for a bag of chips. <laughs> a fucking check, a fucking bag of chips. 
Oh, wait, no, Tim, I said bag of chips. No, no. <laughs> no, no, I said sack of cack. <laughs> Fancy the change, you know. I said, are you a student? He said, he said, you might say I'm studying at the University of Life. I said, that'll do for me, outside. <laughs> He said, no, he said, I'm a pacifist. He said, I, 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 I'm a non-violent pacifist. I said, where I come from, that's fighting talk. <laughs> he said, no, he said, you can strike me, but I will not raise my arm against my fellow man. I thought, bleeding hell, it's Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> he beat the shit out of me. <laughs> Fucking kickboxer, wasn't he? <laughs> And here is the woman herself to tell us more about her new series that shines a light on women in science. It's writer and broadcaster, Dee Gilhooly. Uh, just to clarify, by the way, some viewers may mistakenly think that your second name is Hooley and your first name is Deegal. In actual fact, your second name is Gil Hooley, your first name is Dee. That's a full name, not an initial. Yeah. Welcome. Wicked to be here. Cool. So you're perhaps best known as one of the regulars on Radio 4's Woman's Hour. Which, by the way, guys, well worth a listen. Oh, I wouldn't have had you down as a fan, Alan. Well, it's, an, it's a curious story. I was actually uh, stuck in traffic and Classic FM were playing music from an advert which I dislike. So I found myself listening to Woman's Hour and I thought, this is actually good. <laughs> tell your friends. I did. I told ten men and they will tell ten men and they will tell ten men to tell ten men to tell ten men. It sounds like the kind of song you'd sing on a coach trip, but it's actually true. Now, your radio series focuses on trailblazers and groundbreakers in the field of science. Bang on, yeah. It's a chance for some brilliant, lesser-known women to have their stories told, you know what I mean? So, uh, with all due respect to your Ada Lovelaces or Rosalind Franklins, we're going to be looking at women under the bonnet, as it were, um, the fuel in the turbocharger. Because there's some fascinating women here. We're talking Vera Rubin, Nettie Stevens, yeah. Cecilia Payne. I mean, brilliant women. Oh, kick-ass women. Yeah, Cecilia Payne's actually is an amazing story. A British astronomer got her doctorate at 25. Boom. <laughs> and she wrote a paper on the composition of the stars, but was persuaded not to publish it by her colleague, Henry Norris Russell. Years later, her findings were published and credited to... You've guessed it. Henry Norris Russell. Bingo. Are you still with us, Alan? The, yeah. So I'm sorry to... Actually, it makes me physically sick to say this, but I was miles away. Which shows this is a real problem within men, isn't it? Um, what I will say, the purposes of clarification, is um, you don't put fuel in the turbocharger. It's a small turbine housed within the exhaust that utilises excess gases, loops them back round, increases power output. So small capacity engine, big hike in power very efficient. That was told to me by an engineer in oily overalls called Karen. Woman. Fair play. Yeah. <laughs> well, because women in jobs like that have to put up with their fair share of jeering, you know, even now in 2018, and they just have to accept it. If I can just speak as a male, I am sorry, I have sinned. I've stood on the pavement with other men and slow hand clapped as I watched a woman try to parallel park. And that's wrong. And I think if I saw the same thing happen today, I would just, you know, shout out instructions. Or just leave her alone. Yeah, I'd shout out instructions or just leave her alone. I'd ask her which she prefers. Or just leave her alone. Or just leave her alone. Yeah. These issues need to be aired by women. We're still seeing powerful men harassing women when all they want to do is do their jobs and be left alone. Amen. <laughs> hey, women. I mean, I, I, I feel you, I feel you. I don't, I don't mean I feel you, I wouldn't do that unless I was your, your doctor or your boyfriend. But I totally identify with what you're saying. Well, I, I think the Me Too is a woman thing, yeah, really, exactly. isn't it? I mean, I'm not sure yeah. it's that helpful for a man to presume <laughs> to know what that's like, to be honest, but anyway. Of course it is. Yes. It, you know, if men actually listened to what women were saying on mm. harassment, then they'd shut up and listen, <laughs> but they don't. You know, so we're still seeing the same things time... I've been yeah. sexually harassed. I'm sorry I wasn't aware. It's not quite the same thing that women have been through, but uh, it is a bit.